All right, you get over here. Now, you answer that door, and remember, nobody has to get hurt. Yes, sir. Oh, evening, Mr. Barkley. Evening, Sam. And I got you burning the midnight oil, haven't I? That shipment of gold come in yet? Yes, sir, Mr. Barkley. We loaded it quite a while ago. It's already on board the train. You wait right here. I'll get the bill of lading for you. Fine. Say, by the way, what happened to Monty? Monty? Yeah, he was supposed to meet me over at my office as soon as he got back from the mine. Maybe he went out for a cup of coffee. At this hour? Something bothering you, Sam? No, not a thing. Everything is just fine. Well, I'm going home. If he comes back here, tell him I want to see him first thing in the morning. Mr. Barkley, wait, please. Hold it. drink? No. Neither do I. I'll get it. I'll get it. My friend, come on in. How is he, Nick? Well, we don't really know yet. The doctor's up with him. Any luck, Sheriff? Oh, it's too dark to pick up his trail tonight. We're going to try again in the morning. We're going to have to have an awful lot of luck to catch him without some sort of identification. Let's hope Jerry can tell us something. Well, let's just hope he pulls through. I'm going up there. Nick, the doc said to wait. Well, he's been up there more than an hour. Well, there's not a thing you can do up there except get in the way. I guess you're right. Nick, he, he's going to be all right. Thanks to the good doctor. Oh, don't thank me. Thank the good Lord that bullet wasn't an inch or two over. Can we see him now? Well, I've given him something to sleep, Nick. It would be better if he wasn't disturbed. Rest is what he needs most. Well, Victoria, I'll be back tomorrow to change those bandages. Doc, how soon will he be able to see somebody? Oh, day, maybe two. I don't think it'll be any less than that, Sheriff. Hmm. Remember, Victoria, no moving around and plenty of sleep. All right, thank you, Doctor. Good night. Try not to worry. Fred, did you see Sam's wife? Yeah, she took it pretty hard. I'll go see her tomorrow. Audra, I think we could all use some coffee. I'll put some on. Victoria, did Jared say anything at all about the men who shot him? Oh, yes, he recognized them. Oh? The Dunnigan brothers. Dunnigan brothers? Mark and Davy Dunnigan. Well, they shouldn't be too hard to find. They hang out in Sunflower. Fred, how long would it take to get up a posse? Sunflowers across the state line, Nick. So? Isn't a thing I can do. Not a thing you can do. 
Fred, they killed two men right in front of your nose. They came close to killing Jared. My authority ends at the state line. You know that, Nick. I just can't go chasing into another state. Now, I'll give you as large a posse as you need, but they'll have to stay within the state limits. They're not going to stick around here. I'm sorry, boys. That's the best I can do. Now, I've got no more love for the Dunnigans than I have for Frank and Jesse James. But if they're back in Sunflower, they're out of my reach. Well, it looks like we'll just have to bring them back here ourselves. But once they are back, they can be tried for murder, right? They can. And be convicted, too, with Jared's testimony. But if you try bringing them back here against their will, they have every right in the world to defend themselves. You mean they have the right to kill us? Exactly. What you're planning to do, Heath, is illegal. Legal, illegal. Why don't you tell some of that stuff to Sam's widow and kids, huh? All right. All right, Nick. I got to be getting back. Uh, do one thing for me. Check with Marshal Moore and Sunflower before you try to do anything yourselves. All right? All right, if it'll help. But I'll tell you one thing. We're going to get those Dunnigans back here in a cell. You can count on that. citizens. You figure they don't know where the Dunnigans get the money for those contributions? Well, now they can't be that stupid. They must know they're outlaws. Well, I guess they figure a contribution's a contribution no matter where it comes from. Well, let's get the horses put up. <laughs> Clean up and put up the horses, will you? Glad, sir. Oh. Just sign right here, please. That covered? Yes, sir. For tomorrow night also, if you're staying. We might be. Barkley. That's right. You the same Barkley's on that big spread near Stockton? The same. Heard about you. Well, I'm Heath. my brother Nick. We're uh, looking for the Dunnigan brothers. Do you know them? Sure. Everyone in Sunflower knows them. Well, could you tell us where we might find them? No. Well, could you tell us where the marshal's office is? The corner building. Just beyond the square. All right. Take good care of them, huh? Sorry, gentlemen. Straight flush. Oh, Jamie. You won again. Well, how could I lose with you standing next to me? Mark, keep your eye on this. And you, my little good luck charm, you follow me. I got something for you. That is, of course, if you gentlemen will excuse me. <laughs> Willie, let's have that box. That's it. There we are. Now then. Oh. Look at that. Daisy, it's beautiful. Oh, it's just beautiful. There's no beat that brother of mine. He's an expert at cards and women. A little more, John? Why not? Hmm. Daisy, you can see right through it. <laughs> you can? <laughs> <laughs> Willie drinks for everybody. <laughs> Well, Not now, Jerry. I'm busy. It's important. I gotta talk to you. Later, son. Later. Mr. Dunnigan? Three kings. That's not good enough, John. I got three aces. Does it to me? Mr. John here. 
No, Mark, you don't have to do that. No, I don't have to do that. I want to do that. Just call it a loan. You pay me back when you can. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks very much. Now, Jerry, what is it? Two men rode into town named Barkley. They want to know where you... Davey? Yeah. Barclays are in town. They asked me about you. They wanted to know where you were. I told them I didn't know. How many of them are there, Jerry? Two. They asked the way to the marshal's office. They did, huh? Hey, uh, Jerry, thanks a lot. Thanks, Mr. Dunnigan. Mark? Now, what kind of business would the Barclays be doing with our marshal? I told you I want you to listen, not talk. This town, my town, is almost entirely free from crime. And the rest of the county is almost as good. Do you know why that is? Yes, we know why that is. Because the Dunnigans do their robbing and killing someplace else. You saw the schoolhouse on your way into town. The Dunnigans paid for almost all of it. Three years ago, we had a drought. Bad one. Practically every head of stock would have been wiped out if the Dunnigans hadn't bought 50 carloads of hay, had it shipped all the way down from the Sacramento Valley. You want me to go on? No, no, not necessarily. What I'm trying to tell you is this. The Dunnigan brothers are Sunflower's most popular and important citizens. And it's mighty unlikely that anyone would take kindly to a couple of strangers who accuse them of robbery or murder. Well, now, we're not talking to just anyone. We're talking to the Marshal of Sunflower. And the Marshal of Sunflower tells you this. The crimes you mentioned took place in San Joaquin County, which is out of my jurisdiction. Then you don't intend to give us any help at all, huh? Couldn't if I wanted to. Which you don't. Gentlemen, I'm not trying to intimidate you. Just like to give you some advice. It's friendly advice, even though you may not believe that at this moment. Forget it. I just don't see how we can do that, Marshal. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Yeah. If you're still looking for the Dunnigans, they're over in the saloon. They told me to tell you they'd like to buy you a drink. Yeah? Welcome to Sunflower, gentlemen. My name's Davy Dunnigan. This is my brother, Mark. Willie, set up a bottle for our guests. Have a drink, gentlemen, on me. Be with you just as soon as I finish this hand. How's it feel living on a goldfish bowl? How long are we going to put up with this foolishness? As long as this pre whiskey holds up. Huh? Happy days. Well, thank you, honey. Well, 
Mark. I think I'll call you. I've got a straight. Well, I'm afraid that uh, finishes me. Well, gentlemen, y'all got business here in Sunflower, or are you just uh, passing through? Matter of fact, we're here on business. We might as well get to it. Seems that last Friday night, two men decided to rob the Stockton Depot of 10,000 gold. Killed two men doing it. Station agent and one of our hands. Also tried to kill our brother, but didn't. Our brother recognized him as uh, the Dunnigans. Well, I've never been so absolutely flabbergasted in my whole life. Oh? Mr. Barclay, I'm sorry to hear about your trouble. But let me tell you something. Me and my brother Mark, why, we never set foot in Stockton in our whole lives. Ain't it right, Mark? That's right. Why, you two men made this whole long trip for nothing. Why don't you have another drink on the house before you start back? Well, now we weren't figuring starting back just yet. Oh, no? All we want you to do is prove where you were. Well, we don't have to prove anything. In this country, you're innocent until you're proved guilty. Exactly. So you two shouldn't mind going back and facing the man that says he saw you. <laughs> you know, the trouble with you, Barclay, is you're just like all the rest. You're always willing to believe the worst about folks who've got a... Uh, what is it they say? A different political persuasion from yours. Now, let me tell you something about the Dunnigans that maybe you don't know. There used to be quite a few more of us. We all fought on the side of the Confederacy. We were all raiders, every one of us, and now that just me and Mark has left. Yeah, we were mighty poor by the time the war was finished. Of course, all of us on the wrong side were poor. But for some reason or other, most Yankees seem to end up pretty well off. We're getting a little off the subject. Nobody's talking about the war. Well, I'm talking about the war. Here in Sunflower, we ain't forgotten it. And the rich folks in San Francisco, and Sacramento, Washington, and Stockton, they ain't forgotten it either. <laughs> Me and my brother Mark, why, we ain't the kind to go around killing people, except in line of duty when we had to. But I'll tell you this. We ain't riding to Stockton or any other unfriendly place to have a lot of unfriendly people accuse us of murder. We're innocent, but we ain't stupid, I'll tell you that. Now, you still got business in this town, gentlemen? We might have. All right, you have till tonight to do it. Well, we... We figured it'd take a little longer than that. And what do you think you're gonna do about it? All you have to do to find out is stay here. Yeah, just try it. Well, the odds can't get much better than they are now, can they? So you, threatening, you're gonna make that threat good right here and right now in front of these witnesses. Now, let me tell you people something. I'm the only doctor in town, and I'm out of practice extracting bullets. Now, what's the matter with you two? Do you have any idea how many innocent people can get shot up, including you? And you, kindly use the brains the good Lord gave you and go home. How can you possibly believe that you'd be allowed to harm this town's two most important citizens? Look around you. Do you see any friendly faces? Whoa. Whoa, uh, I think the doc is right. I mean, I reckon we have been a mite less than hospitable, wouldn't you say? But I tell you what, now, you Barclays, you just make yourselves to home. Stay just as long as you want. My brother here, he's just a little put out. I mean, after all, you come in here accusing him of a crime. He's sensitive. I apologize for him. But I want to say right here and now that you two gentlemen got plenty of good old-fashioned guts. Have another drink. Oh, if you're still around tonight, why, come on over here. We're going to have a party. Sort of a double celebration. 
Uh, today's my birthday. And me and my brother Mark also celebrating a successful business deal we just made. We're gonna have lots of fun, gonna be lots to eat, lots of drink, plenty of pretty girls. Y'all come, yeah? I wish that punk Donegan had pushed me that much further. Ah, simmer down, Nick. That's exactly what they wanted you to do. Must be some way to get them Donegans back to Stockton. It's gonna be tough. They got the whole town behind them. You saw that? Yeah, but why? They gotta know they're outlaws. They know. They've been bought. It's that simple. A killer isn't a killer anymore as long as you can build a nice new school. I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired. Think I'll take a little nap. Get out, boy. You think you know the Dunnigans? Well, you don't. You're in a family from miles around that don't owe them a lot. You practice and be murderer like they are? They ain't murderers. The Dunnigan send you? No, I came alone. Besides, I wasn't gonna kill you. Just wanted to scare you out. So we wouldn't hurt your friends? They're everybody's friends. You'd back shoot them just as soon as look at them. You rich ranchers are all like that. Now you listen to me, boy. I'm gonna tell you something. We're exactly the same as anybody else. Especially when outlaws try to kill our friends. You're a liar. They never shot anyone. They're good people. They take from those that got too much and give to folks that got too little. He believes every word of that, Nick. No sense taking him to the marshal. Well, we better get him to the doctor. He's got quite a lump there. Come on, boy. I don't need no doctor. You don't need a doctor. At least not the kind I am. I've never yet been able to cure anybody of outright stupidity. You don't even need a bandage. Now, just keep your head out of the dirt and your nose out of other people's business. Notice you two are still here. Is something bothering you? A few things. For example, number one, what made you think that boy was doing something he shouldn't have been doing? Well, I've been around here a while. He didn't try to use that old gun on you, did he? He had it. He didn't get a chance to use it. Well, it was decent of you not to hurt him any more than you did. Now, that boy's suffering the worst case of hero worship I've ever seen. He thinks the Dunnigans are the greatest thing since Robin Hood. You realize he's not alone. You too, Doc? I know what they've done for the people of this county. You didn't answer my question, Doc. Are you a Dunnigan worshiper, too? No. I owe him quite a bit, as does everyone else around here. In that room, you'll find the finest medical equipment anywhere. The money for it didn't come from my patients. No, it came from people like us. I've helped a lot of folks with it. 
Saved quite a few lives, I'd say. As for the Dunnigans, oh, I know what they are. They're outlaws. They may be guilty of many things, including those that you accuse them of. But, but you just don't care. You don't care. Just so long as you get everything you need as a doctor, you don't care. I care. I try not to think about it too much, that's all. This is a town of decent people, whether you believe it or not. At least I believe them to be decent. Well, I don't believe it, Doc. Any town that would protect two killers can't be anything but rotten clear through. You're wrong about that. I've known most of them many years, brought a great many into this world. I have considerable affection for them. So let me tell you once again, forget your mission of vengeance and leave. You've lost two men, you say, and I'm sorry. But many more men will be lost if you start something here which you know you will never be able to finish. Now, what you're saying is either we leave or one of them Nice, decent citizens of yours just might kill us. That's exactly what I mean. They're the same as people have always been. If you try to destroy their gods, they'll annihilate you. There's not a thing in this world that can stop them. Where's the saloon? Could buy you a drink. Oh, well, that's not a very good idea. You got a better one? Well, we could go over to the bank and visit our stolen gold. Ten to one, it's in that vault. You know, I'm beginning to think the only way to handle this whole thing is to walk into that saloon there, gun in hand, and take them, kidnap them. Yeah, that makes real good sense. Well, that's the only way I can figure to get them out of town. Now, Nick, there's got to be another way. What would you say would be the best reason to get them out of town? Something to steal. A stagecoach full of gold, a train, ho... Cash. In our pockets? Yeah. Lots of it. Come on. Mother? Mother? Yes? Did you get the quinine? Yes. The doctor said to give it to me every four hours. Mm -hmm. Here's a telegram from the boys. How's Jerry? Oh, much better, much better. Oh, listen to this. Need 5,000 cash immediately to purchase prize breeding stock. Please telegraph money, Sunflower Bank. Breeding stock? Hmm. I heard Nick tell Jared we didn't need any breeding stock now. Well, even if we do, they wouldn't have to pay cash for us. But the telegram says, Need 5,000 immediately to purchase prize breeding. Maybe it's for something else. Do they say anything about the Dunnigan brother? No, no. It... That just may be for something else. from Stockton. Hey, you're mighty early for the party, boys. They're still decorating inside. Well, we didn't exactly come for that. We're on our way out of town. Oh, really? Well, I hope those few hot words we had before aren't the cause for your departure. No, no, no. Forget that. We got a big spread. Got to get to running it. Right now, we're mighty short on breeding stock. Here there's some fine horses in a town called Spinner. That's not far from here, is it? Yeah, it's about 50 miles. You take the North Fork just outside of town. Yeah, they got some mighty fine horses up in Spinner. A bit on the expensive side, though. 
No, we can handle it. Oh, good. I just uh, thought I'd warn you. Well, that's mighty kind of you. Look, you stood us to drinks before. We'd like to return the favor. Oh, no. You don't buy drinks. Not as long as you're in this town. Drinks on me. Come on in. Folks have been working for hours. I asked them not to, but they wanted to do it for old Davy. Hi, Davy. How does it look? Why, it looks beautiful. Just lovely. Sit down, gentlemen. Olga, honey, would you get us a bottle and some glasses, please? Sure. Mark, come on down from there. Come on over here. Guess what? Our good friends from Stockton ain't gonna be able to stay for the party tonight. They're gonna ride on up to Spinner to get some good breeding stock. Oh, it's a shame. Well, can't you stay over till tomorrow? I got Olga working on getting a couple of nice some girls for you. Don't know, honey? Uh, sure. Uh, thanks just the same. We thought we'd travel a little while tonight. Get an early start in the morning. Miss the heat of the day that way. Well, that makes sense. Well, one for the road, as we say. Cheers. You know, my brother and I, I guess we kind of made a little mistake in judgment. Oh, no harm done. I don't know what my brother means is, uh, well, we weren't aware of the fact you had so many good friends in this town. Nice, decent, respectable people. Well, with so many friends, we can't be all bad now, can we? <laughs> well, I'm glad you came to that conclusion. Oh. We might do a thing now and again that uh, society frowns on, but uh, killing? Not the Dunnigans. Except maybe in self-defense, you understand. Yeah. Well, I guess we better be going, then. Thanks for the drink, gentlemen. Pleasure. Uh, before we go, I'd like to give you boys a little word of advice. Stay away from Stockton, huh? Well, all right, if you say so. Let's go, Nick. I hear it's a nice place, though. Close to midnight. Not a sign of him. Said five thousand dollars wasn't enough bait. Either that or the Dunnigans are smarter than we figured. Oh, come on. We better answer the back door. Anytime you're ready. Forget about it. They're not coming. Still got time to get back before that party breaks up. What are you talking about? Uh, you know that lousy idea you had this afternoon about kidnapping him? Doesn't sound too much like a lousy idea now, does it? Like that's all we got left. Let's have at it. Can't be 
have too many left inside. Sure, I am hungry. Olga, isn't anybody hungry besides me? Oh, the fire's out in the kitchen stove, Daisy. Well, now you just light that fire right up again, Olga, honey. Um, how about some nice, juicy steak and onions? Oh, that'd be just great. And then maybe we can eat up in your room privately, huh? If you want to. That's a nice girl. I know this party was going to break up so early, I'd have gone out and got some money from some friends. Five thousand dollars worth. <laughs> yeah? And you would have walked into a nice, fat trap, too. You just see if you could make it to your horse without falling all over yourself. Mr. Donegan. I don't need nobody going with me. Mr. Donegan? Mr. Donegan? Are you sure you're all right? I mean, I can at least help you saddle up your horse. I told you I don't need nobody going along with me. All right, Mr. Donegan. I, mean, I just don't want you to fall off and get hurt, maybe. What's the matter there, boy? It's your brother, Mr. Donegan. He can't hardly stand up. Oh, you'd be surprised how much old Mark can hold. He'd be all right, son. I told you, he'd be all right. Just the same. I'm going to see you get home, okay? Well, suit yourself. <laughs> well, that's half the battle. Come on. The other half, I'm really going to enjoy. Now, boy, who's back? The Barclays. I just seen them sneaking around the livery. They must have jumped your brother inside. You sure it was them? I saw him, Mr. Dunnigan, honest. They're watching out front, waiting for you. Yeah. Well, we go all the way around. We get to the barn from the alley. Come on, Dunnigan, come out of there. Running out of patience. And time. It'll be sun up soon. Would 
you settle for one done again? Oh, no, no, no. We're going to bring them both back. Drag him out right there. You think he's still in there? Maybe. Maybe he left before we ever got here. There's only one way to find out. His brother. Be right back. Right back. I feel my hay fever coming up. <laughs> All right, Mark? Yeah. Jerry, shut that door. Now, listen, Mark. They gotta come back here after you. And as soon as they step inside, we'll cut them in half. Well, something's going on in the barn. The door was just being closed as I got there. Well, he must have got loose. No, he couldn't have. Somebody must be in there with him. Just best draw him out. Come on. Nick, you start yelling, you'll draw this whole town out. That's a chance we'll have to take. Why don't you get over there and cover me? Dunningham. Open the door, throw your gun out, and come out with your hands raised high. You got 30 seconds left. Or we'll set fire to the place and smoke you out. Nick. The time's almost up. Hey, boy. Oh, just be quiet, boy. Now listen, Mark. I'll go out there first and draw their fire. When you see them, you try to get in with your first couple of shots. If you don't, just hit the ground and stay there. By that time, there'll be enough people out there that chew them to pieces. For killing the kid, you understand? All right, now go on. Get over there and kick that door open. He's gunned the boy down, Marshal. I think they killed That's him. That's a lie. Give me your gun. Oh, now, Marshal. I, I thought... said, give me your gun. Yours, too. Somebody get Doc Landrum. Stretcher. Marshal, they came back to get us, and that poor Jerry got in the way, and they shot him in the back. You're a liar. Marshal, if you'll check those guns, you'll find one shot fired. It's in his shoulder. Uh, Jerry, now take it easy. Take it easy. Lie back. 
Donegan? Yes. What'd you do with Mr. Donegan? I've always been your friend. I helped you. Why'd you shoot me in the back? Why? Well, the boy's hurt. He don't know what he's saying. Well, I saw him do it with my own two eyes. No. Dunnigan did it. The one at all of you think it was the Barclays. But he's the one who shot me. In the back. Mr. Dunnigan. My friend. One shot, that's all. Well, Marshal, you know them two came here to get us, and that's all. They didn't care how they did it. They even shot a kid. Now, you know we wouldn't do that. We looked after Jerry for years. This gun's empty. Well, I had to defend myself. Yeah. Is the boy gonna make it, Doc? I don't know yet. If the boy dies, you'll stand trial for murder right here in Sunflower. Jerry lives, I'll turn the Dunnigans over to you and I'll ride with you to Stockton. Right. All right, you two, let's go. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Listen, what's the matter with you people? What's the matter with you? You all gonna stand here and let this happen to the Dunnigans? You owe us. You all owe us. Ain't a man standing here that don't owe us. Sam. Sam Wyndham, listen, come here, come, come here, come here, stay here, listen to me. Listen, who gave you the money for your wife's operations? Two of them, huh? And you, if you wouldn't have made it through last winter, you and your wife and your five kids, if it hadn't been for the money that me and my brother Mark gave to you. And how about the church, in the schoolhouse, and when we had that drought, where are you people going? You come back here, I'm talking to you! Dunnigan. You come back here, I'm talking to you! Dunnigan. You hear me? I'm talking to you, come back here! Would you mind holding that down to a shout? Well, I just wanted to know whether you got to the post office today or not. No, I didn't, but Jared did. Oh. Jared! Oh, someday you're going to shatter all the windows to say nothing of my eardrums. I just wanted to know whether I got a letter from Marshall Moore's Sunflower. Oh. A uh, heat. Some martial war. Seems Jerry Fry's gonna be all right. Well, he wasn't such a bad kid. Just had a bad case of hero worship on the wrong hero. Oh, by the way, did you say Jared went to the post office? Well, is that so unusual? What are you doing out of bed? You're walking. I might even manage a small waltz with the right partner. Sorry, my dance program's all filled up. Well, now he looks almost as good as new, doesn't he? He sure does. Well, that being the case, I have a few legal chores for you, Jared. Number one, I just purchased 50 acres of land from San Woodfield. I'm going to stock it with Herefords. And I want you to sue Holt County. Holt County? They gave us 50 acres of land free on the condition that we would put our winery there. Well, the land turned out not as free as we thought. It seems that the taxes are twice as high as the original price of the land. And where are you going? Back to bed. But I... Doctor said to take it easy for a little while. I think I'll just heed his advice. I just... <laughs>
All right, you get over here. Now, you answer that door, and remember, nobody has to get hurt. Yes, sir. Oh, evening, Mr. Barkley. Evening, Sam. Kind of got you burning the midnight oil, haven't I? That shipment of gold come in yet? Yes, sir, Mr. Barkley. We loaded it quite a while ago. It's already on board the train. You wait right here. I'll get the bill of lading for you. Fine. You say, by the way, what happened to Monty? Monty? Yeah, he was supposed to meet me over at my office as soon as he got back from the mine. Maybe he went out for a cup of coffee. At this hour? Something bothering you, Sam? No, not a thing. Everything is just fine. Well, I'm going home. If he comes back here, tell him I want to see him first thing in the morning. Mr. Barkley, wait, please. Hold it. How is he, Nick? Well, we don't really know yet. The doctor's up with him. Any luck, Sheriff? Oh, it's too dark to pick up his trail tonight. We're going to try again in the morning. We're going to have to have an awful lot of luck to catch him without some sort of identification. Let's hope Jerry can tell us something. Well, let's just hope he pulls through. I'm going up there. Nick, the doc said to wait. Well, he's been up there more than an hour. Well, there's not a thing you can do up there except get in the way. I guess you're right. Nick, he, he's going to be all right. Thanks to the good doctor. Oh, don't thank me. Thank the good Lord. That bullet wasn't an inch or two over. Can we see him now? Oh, I've given him something to sleep, Nick. It would be better if he wasn't disturbed. Rest is what he needs most. Well, Victoria, I'll be back tomorrow to change those. All 
advise you get over here. Now you answer that door and remember, nobody has to get hurt. Yes, sir. Oh, evening, Mr. Barkley. Evening, Sam. Kind of got you burning the midnight oil, haven't I? That shipment of gold come in yet? Yes, sir, Mr. Barkley. We loaded it quite a while ago. It's already on board the train. You wait right here. I'll get the bill of lading for you. Fine. You say, by the way, what happened to Monty? Monty? Yeah, he was supposed to meet me over at my office as soon as he got back from the mine. Maybe he went out for a cup of coffee. At this hour? Something bothering you, Sam? No, not a thing. Everything is just fine. Well, I'm going home. If he comes back here, tell him I want to see him first thing in the morning. Mr. Barkley, wait, please. Hold it. How is he, Nick? Well, we don't really know yet. The doctor's up with him. Any luck, Sheriff? Oh, it's too dark to pick up his trail tonight. We're going to try again in the morning. We're going to have to have an awful lot of luck to catch him without some sort of identification. Let's hope Jerry can tell us something. Well, let's just hope he pulls through. I'm going up there. Nick, the doc said to wait. Well, he's been up there more than an hour. Well, there's not a thing you can do up there except get in the way. I guess you're right. Nick, he, he's going to be all right. Thanks for the good doctor. Oh, don't thank me. Thank the good Lord that bullet wasn't an inch or two over. Can we see him now? Oh, I've given him something to sleep, Nick. It would be better if he wasn't disturbed. Rest is what he needs most. Well, Victoria, I'll be back tomorrow to change those bandages. Doc, how soon will he be able to see somebody? Oh, day, maybe two. I don't think it'll be any less than that, Sheriff. Remember, Victoria, no moving around and plenty of sleep. All right. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Try not to worry. Fred, did you see Sam's wife? Yeah, she took it pretty hard. I'll go see her tomorrow. Audra, I think we could all use some coffee.